Hello, ladies and gentlemen, Forrest Walpole, commentator for Apex Wrestling here, welcoming you live from Ground Zero here in the Nationwide Arena in Columbus, Ohio. And man, we got a good show for you guys tonight, ladies and gentlemen. We got one hell of a show for you, and we got to get things started here. We got one hell of a good show for you guys tonight, but we got to get things started with the now former Apex World Heavyweight Champion, Riley Wolf. Earlier, earlier this week, Riley Wolf was told by Lee Anderson that he was officially stripped of the World Heavyweight Championship. And tonight, Riley Wolf looks to share, looks to have some time out here. He's he's demanded time out here. He's gonna get it, and we're gonna wait. We're gonna see what this man has to say in regards to what took place this past weekend on Warzone. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Riley Wolf. Who the hell does Lee Anderson think he is taking away my title? And the I don't give empty promises. I will do what I told you I was going to do. Lee, throughout the night, you will slowly find out who attacked young AK, AK to give me this opportunity to turn Apex up side down you're not going to be very happy Mr. Anderson I promise you that fight against Austin Collins with Collins being victorious by submission in that match and tonight he's going up against Franco Levetta a man who has also been known to be a hard hitter even though he has done a bit of a hit or miss time in Apex Wrestling tonight he looks to follow Austin Collins' and footstep and beat from Toronto, the Intercontinental Ontario, Champion Canada. Weighing in at 198 pounds, Franco. And Franco Livetta is a man on a mission. He is going to be competing here tonight against Kurt Carter in a non-title match up here tonight. And this is going to be an interesting match to say the least. And in case anybody is wondering, yes, this is the fallout episode of Ground Zero following the actions that took place on Monopoly as well as on Warzone. And man, what a war zone we had on the on this past weekend. Considering how it was just crazy moment after crazy moment on that show. That show was absolutely crazy. With especially with the last few matches as well as the promo that Lee Anderson announced uh, that Riley Wolf would be stripped of the World Heavyweight Championship. He has yet to announce when or how the world title is going to be defended because of the vacan vacan vacancy of the world title. And now, ladies and gentlemen, these two men, Frank Lavetta and Kirk Carter, looking to try to outdo the other here tonight. Carter has been on a roll ever since he made his debut appearance in Apex Wrestling. Oh, and there's a flatliner, flatliner by Franco Levetta. Oh man, what a slide 
Olivetta and now Carter in deep trouble here. Oh man, oh, Carter by Carter. And now Carter, oh man, half Nelson suplex. Now Carter, go for a twisted and prettier. Cover already, click on a one because of the rope break. And now Carter, in control of Levetta. Oh man, and Luvetta. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, counter by Carter. And Carter DDT. Carter has been a hard hitting champion. He has been a hard hitting wrestler, man. Nobody can deny what Kirk Carter can do in this ring. Franco Luvetta has done pretty damn, has done pretty good for his own. However, he has not had the victories to back up his claim while being a damn good wrestler in his own right, sadly. Cover, quick out of one by Luvetta. But I gotta give Luvetta where credit is due. He has tried his best to get victory after victory. He has not been able to do so. Oh man, sit out power by my corner. He has done everything in his power to do so. And now Carter in control of Luvetta. Oh wait, oh I can run it by Luvetta. And now Luvetta in control. Uh oh, oh man. Right in the arm. And Luvetta taking it at Carter. Oh, my Carter gives him a bulldog. And Carter is going absolutely crazy here. Cover after the kick to the back. Quick on it, one by Luvetta. And Franco Luvetta is in some trouble here. Oh, what a slap. You can hear that. And kick right on the side of the head. Carter going after the knee of Franco Luvetta. Carter now being the Intercontinental Champion meeting. Oh, man, kicks him to the side of the head. And Luvetta with a kick to the side of the head. But now Carter being, is in a, being the new Intercontinental Champion means that you get to see him on two shows. Oh, at least, two, at most, two shows a week. And oh, what a knee right in the face of Luvetta. Carter with a cover. Oh, kick on a two and a half. Carter thought he had it. And now Carter. Inverted dragon sleeper on Luvetta. Luvetta's in trouble here. Oh man, but Luvetta taking the Intercontinental Champion off his feet. And now Luvetta. Oh, what a cutter! Luvetta with, an, with a Luvetta cutter. Cover! Kick on a two by Carter. How in the hell did Carter kick out of that? And Luvetta doing a little bit of hype for the crowd. And now Luvetta going on the arm. In the lane, going for the submission hold. Carter is in trouble. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, kicks him a couple of times in the face. Carter is now out of it. Catches the leg though. Carter's seen that kick coming. And now Carter going for a power bomb. But Luvetta's seen it coming. Roll up cover. Quick out of one by Carter. Carter already lost one match. He doesn't want to lose a second one here. Whoa. Oh man. And oh. Double knees to the back. Cover by Levetta. Kick on a two by Carter. Already the first match in this crowd. 
is getting hype as a motherfuck right here. And now Carter in trouble. Luvetta measuring him for the corner. If it hits, it's all over. Carter! Luvetta with a corner. Cover. Two. Ball kick out at two and a half. Lovetta thought he had him, but he didn't. Oh, Lovetta gets counted by Carter. And now Carter. Oh, gets counted by Lovetta, but Lovetta gets counted right back. Oh, man, Lovetta is in, or, uh, Carter's in trouble. Oh, no. Oh, man, what a cross body that was. Oh, man. Carter's in trouble now. And Lavetta going for the cover here. Kick on a two. Hold it. Oh! Carter moves out of the way. Oh, he got him. But I don't think he got all of it, though. Carter got him, but I don't think he got all of it, though. Cover. Let's take it forever. Eckhart Carter, though, managed to get enough for a three count. Oh, man, what a counter, though. That was some crazy moments in this match. Crazy match up here tonight between Carter and Luvetta. Here is your winner, the show, Kirk. Wait a minute! Wait a minute, what the hell? What the hell? Who the hell is that? What the hell? What? Who the hell is this guy? Oh my god, this guy is massive! What the hell? Dude, this... Oh my god, dude, who the hell is this? Who the hell is this? This dude is fucking massive, man! What the hell? Oh my god, just manhandling Carter! And Carter just went through hell against Franco Lavetta. Who the hell is this guy? What the hell is this? Oh man, what the hell is that? I, I don't even... Who the hell is that? I don't even know. Jesus. Making his way to the ring from Atlanta, Georgia, weighing in at 241 pounds, Goldman Daniel Harris. Oh, Daniel Harris has had an up and down time in Apex Wrestling. The last time we seen him, he was in that six man battle royal where the final two participants would be given the chance to go for the Tag Team Money in the Bank briefcase at Monopoly. Originally, it was supposed to be Daniel Harris and Danny the Bodyguard, but due to some iffy situations... Oh wait, actually, I cor correct correction. It is supposed to be Daniel Harris and Dylan Morrison, but due to the uh, crap with the Booker, um, it was at, it would go on to be Devil Morrison and Danny the Bodyguard. Now, due to that, and we his opponent had a bit of a weird from thing Birmingham, going on. England, so, weighing in at 215 pounds, the Dragon Dylan Aaron Morrison. So, at this point, I'm guessing that one half of the Tag Team Money in the Bank briefcases will be up for grabs here tonight in this matchup between 
Harris and Morrison. And what is sure to be a very good matchup between these two men because if you ask me, I believe uh, Harris would love to have some payback against Morrison for eliminating him in that matchup a few weeks ago, leading up to the two men being part of the, well, the two men supposed to have been a part of that Money in the Bank briefcase match. Just so we clear that. So right now, Daniel Harris, we're gonna try to get back not only into winning matches like he has done so many times in the past, but if you ask me, he's probably looking to try to get in the good side of <coughs> the good side of the now war zone general manager Riley Wolf. So because um, earlier today it was announced that uh Dad Sarris would be fired uh as war zone general manager due to his inactivity and um, in terms of that, Riley Wolf is now the official new, mem new general manager of uh, Warzone, while Christian Trace will be the sole general manager of Ground Zero. In other words, Riley Wolf will now officially be drafted from Warzone to Ground Zero, as the whole general managers cannot wrestle on the same show. They are uh, they are in charge of. That rule is still in effect, and it most likely will be a still be a fact when 2K20 rolls around. Among other rules here, among other this regular event, or not regular event, I'm doing some something else. Dylan Morrison went for the top rope, and as you just see, Harris blocked him with the knees to the chest. Man, Morrison has been on a very emotional roller coaster though. I mean, the dude has had some pretty good matches, but he has hardly if ever come up with any victories under his belt. And he would want nothing more than to embarrass Daniel Harris here in this matchup. And there's a nice suplex there. That, oh, oh, curb stop by Morrison. And now Morrison measuring Harris. We're going to finish the ball, but Harris blocked him. And now Harris, Boston crowd to Dylan Morrison. Morrison looking to go for the ropes, but he gets Harris off of him. Overhead belly to belly by Daniel Harris. And now Harris, Asher going all the way into the corner. What's he think about doing here? Oh, got him! Running knee strike. Harris with the running knee strike, and he looks to be going for it again. Harris measuring Morrison, and got him with a spear this time. Cover. Two. It's getting the half of the briefcase. And there you go, ladies and gentlemen, the winner of this bout. Looking to make a statement once again, Golden Daniel Harris. Oh man, Dylan Morrison, no, not happy at all. I can't really blame him. He's not been able to secure victories in Apex Wrestling for some time now. And it's making me wonder what he, what is he got to do to get victories in this belt. Well, ladies and gentlemen, coming up next, it is a matchup that I've been waiting to see. It's going to be Matt Matthews taking on Alex Wolf, And what is sure to be a very good matchup between these two men. However, 
Lance Romance will not be able to be a ringside for this match as he is set to take on the now former Intercontinental Champion Tamura later on in the show here tonight. And this is going to be an interesting matchup to say the least. And while the match is getting underway, let's take a look at some interesting matches we got going on. First off, for the first time in a while, we'll be seeing the unlikely duo, Young AK and Eric Williams, taking on the tag team champions, DB8, in a non-title match. Then we got Emily Gray taking on Akari Valkyrie in a non-cash-in, non-title match up there, which is going to be interesting. Then, like I said earlier, we got Tomodra taking on Lance Romance, and in the main event, two... Uh, very well hated, very, in, two very, uh, well-known rivals in their own right, outside, who, who are rivals outside of Apex Wrestling, but decided to take their business into Apex Wrestling, TK Rack and Riley Wolf, going to be tearing each other on in the main event, so that's going to be interesting to see, but now with all that being said, it's time to see what we bring to the table with... Alex Wolf takes it on this man right here, Matt Maverick. Making his way to the ring from Columbus, Ohio, weighing in at 220 pounds, the Maverick, Matt Matthews. Well, Matt Matthews, this man right here, seemingly grew up, man, this dude right here. This man right here is, in my opinion, one of the hardest to take down in one of the few wrestlers that, in my opinion, are hard to take down. Even if you can't take him down, he's very hard to do. It's very hard for him to be dealt with like that. And he's actually flexing for the crowd here tonight, I guess. He's like, you know what, fuck it. Why not just show them I mean business tonight? Normally, he's one to show off, but I guess knowing how Alex Wolf is, Matt Matthews is more about being, a, is more about business here tonight. One half of natural romance. The man, the man that makes up the one half of the name, not natural. Alex Wolf coming out of the ring with a tuxedo shirt, and this is going to be a good match up here, ladies and gentlemen. I, I tell you right now, these two men are hard hitters. The Wolf will not be having Lance Romance at ringside. So that may play a factor into this matchup because Lance Romance will be dealing with Tamura later on tonight and what is sure to be a damn near dream match if you ask me. So what an interesting match this is going to be here between these two men. And uh, with a bit of an update here ladies and gentlemen, we do have a thing going on, as you guys know. Uh, Riley Wolf was stripped of the world title this past episode of Warzone. And, in, and Lee Anderson, the owner of Apex Wrestling, announced that there would be a round robin tournament where the name of the tournament will be the name of the next pay per view. And in that. And in this round robin tournament, seven men from Warzone and seven men from Ground Zero will be looking to capture the Apex World Championship. And if you ask me, these two men are well deserving of a world title, world title, a world title match up here. I mean, let's, don't get me wrong. I mean, we haven't seen much of Alex Wolf in Civil's competition, 
But uh, we have seen him. He does do well with his opponents. And Matt Matthews, this man has done everything. He has taken it to many a big man and many a man the size of, uh, like double the size of him. He has been able to take it, go to town with him every chance he gets. But Wolf looks to be another, looks to be a part of that list here. If Matt Matthews can keep up what he's doing right now. Oh, and now, oh, wait a minute. Oh, Jesus. Alex Wolf, nice over, nice suplex there. And a standing suplex there. There's a nice spy buster to Matthews. Now, Wolf for the cover, click on it one. Matthews, nice block, taking it, giving him a shot right in the face. Now Matthews looking to take it to Alex Wolf right now. Oh man, Wolf is just getting destroyed here. Oh man, stop side of the knee. And now Matthews, top rope, all oh, elbow, right in the back of Wolf. And Wolf was just about starting to get up when Matthews went for it. And Matthews taking it to Alex Wolf right now. Oh, there's a super kick. He calls it the Gladiator kick. And now look at him put away Wolf with the line lay down. He calls out the line lay down. Cover. Oh, kick on it, two and a half. I almost thought he had it with. Alex Wolf, but like I said, Wolf is a hard hitter. And even if he doesn't hit hard, he does make you earn that victory. If you want it so bad, you gotta take it. And you gotta take it to him. And earn that opportunity. And now, oh man, he's Wolf with the knee to the gun of Matthews. Matthews has been in the ring with many a big man. He's been in the ring with Jake, with, uh, I believe his name was Jacob Steele. He's been in the ring with Danny the Bodyguard. He's been in the ring with Lance Romance. He's in the ring with Romance's tag partner. Oh man, what a clothesline there that was. A discus clothesline there by Wolf. Cover quick on it one by Matthews. Right now he's taking it too. He's in the ring with the other half of Natural Romance, Alex Wolf. And on the ASW side of things, he's been in the ring with Chance, the man who calls himself the Dream Killer, along as well as Jaden Shadow, who we would face, who we faced off earlier tonight, or early on uh, Apex Wrestling a, a few weeks ago, as well as on All Star Wrestling. And in his latest match, he took it. He took a damn good fight to Nick Nitro but would lose that match later on. Well, he would just go on to lose that matchup, but he would gain the respect of Nick Nitro for his, for his performance in that matchup. And now Matthews, after all that, hits Alex Wolf with what he calls the Gladiator forearm combo. No, actually, no, he calls it the Roman, the, the Roman forearm as he takes it to Alex Wolf. And now he can brag that he just single-handedly beat Nat, both members of Natural Romance one-on-one -on -one with him beating Romance twice and beating the Natural here just now on Apex Wrestling. Right here, right now, on on ground zero, I should say. And that clothesline was a hard hitting one. I'm surprised. Matthews did a quick out. Like literally, it was just a one, not even a two count. He did a quick out. There was that second super kick, and then that. Here Roman is your four, winner, and that was the it. Maverick, Matt Matthews. Man, Matt Matthews. I agree with what I said earlier. He is indeed. And they're running for either an Intercontinental title shot 
or a world title shot. Either way, he is deserving of a title match here in Apex Wrestling, regardless of who it's against and what belt it's for. But we'll see what happens here on this next, here soon, uh, as we look to update you on the round robin tournament, as well as who may or may not be, who may be participating in the match in some way, shape, or form. But for now, Matt Matthews is savoring in his victory. Making his way to the ring, accompanied by Williams, and representing the Union from Kona, Hawaii, weighing in at 204 <sighs> pounds, Young A.K. My well, Young A.K. is like, in my opinion, the mid-card member of, is like the mid-card uh, Fallen Kingdom. Pretty much, she's like a one-man Fallen Kingdom man. man. In the meantime, Eric Williams, he's just a crazy little booger who loves to not only support his new partner in Young AK, but also wrestle in the ring, but due to some very random things, he has not been able to wrestle here tonight due to how many good wrestlers we've had. Not that I'm saying he's a bad wrestler, but we've gotten so many good wrestlers that apparently And that his opponent, accompanied by the Superstar, and representing the crew from Grenoble, France, weighing in at 205 pounds, one half of the tag team, the superstar. Well, Sebastian Noir will be competing here in this matchup here tonight. And then we've had a bit of an interesting night here earlier. But man, we've had one Crazy moment earlier tonight. Speaking of champions, earlier tonight, Kurt Carter was attacked after his match earlier tonight um, in a very interesting way where the man, this freakishly huge man, would come out and attack Kurt Carter after he won his matchup earlier tonight. So now, if you ask me, all the tag team champions, well, all the champions should be on high alert because you never know if there's going to be something going on here tonight. I, I just don't know. Because when you got one crazy man going after a champion, chances are he'd be setting up a, an example for other people to attack some more champions. But like I said, I don't know what's going to happen. In regards to that, that man attacking Kurt Carter earlier tonight, I don't know what's going to happen there. But if you ask me, Kurt Carter is going to be putting himself, he's going to be having to watch his back now, knowing how this freakishly huge man is wanting to take a piece of him and try to end him as bad as possible. In the meantime, Nora and Young Hank actually take it to each other here. There's a nice elbow. Match 
matchup right now, really. And both men are giving it their all to, the, to their respective opponent. And AK honestly needs to make a needs to try to make a bounce back after losing so many matches in a row. And oh, oh! Sebastian Noir just walked, literally walked right out of the way. And now the control is back in favor of the of one half of the Apex Tag Team Champions. Oh man, Noir and Siva are two men who have shown to be a very good tag team combination. They are the, they have earned the moniker of being a great tag team by being the champions. Well, however by Noir, but kind of won by AK. AK thought that kick. Oh, and he gets tripped over in the middle rope. And now Noir. Oh, man. And now Noir measuring AK. Oh, push him to push him back a little bit. And there's a nice wind up shot. And what a clothesline. What a wicked clothesline by Noir. Cover. Click on it too by Young AK. Noir wondering what do I gotta do to put away this man from the dark side here. And he's getting close. Oh! He's getting pretty close though. And now Noir going on the wrong side of the ring. But he's going top rope because there he knows if Williams gets it off. Oh! It might be over. Coup de bra, And there's a cover. And Sebastian Noir gets the victory. That was man. I'm just in this. I'm just in sh a bit of shock. How it took and one other move for. Uh, it took one other move for uh, Noir to get the victory here. Look at this coup de gras right here. That was the move. But understandably so, because that move, depending on how you are, you could actually take the air literally out from your opponent. Enough for the three count to be made. Here is your winner, the superstar. And there you go. Wait, wait a minute. Wait, what the? What the? Oh my God! Who the hell? Like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. DB8. Wait a minute. Oh no. Oh, wait a minute. Williams going after DB8. And so is this big motherfucker. Oh my god, what the hell is going on here? I don't know what the hell is going on there. But this big dude. Look at that. Go just making all hell kind of break loose right here. Going after Jeremiah Seaver. Oh man, this big dude. Look at the size of this man on the right of your screen. See, Aaron Williams is taken down by Sebastian Noir. And now, this big dude working on Seaver here. I don't think he even gives a damn about this Aaron Williams. He just wants to demolish Jeremiah Seaver while Noir, who probably thinks that young AK, Aaron Williams, and this big dude are in cahoots with each other. As Noir is not paying attention to the mid dude while the mid dude is destroying his partner on the other corner of the ring. Oh man. This big dude. This big dude out of fucking nowhere just came out, raised all kinds of hell. But I don't know what the hell is going to happen now. I don't even know who the hell that dude is. 
Wow. Champion, a car or no, 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 Emily Gray, set to go one on one against Akari Valkyrie for the umpteenth time. Honestly, I'm about to say these two women hate each other so badly. It's almost a, the women's equivalent to Trish Stratus versus Lita. Or you want to go with the men's equivalent? I would say something along the lines of Shawn Michaels versus Bret Hart before the Montreal screw job, mind you. So, either way, this is gonna be a good matchup to say the least, and I can't wait to see what happens here tonight. Like I said earlier, like I'm telling you guys right now, I'm a bit and scared her for her. From Valhalla, the Queen. Like I said earlier, I'm a bit scared now for the champions because twice tonight a champion has been attacked by two different people. So I'm honestly a bit scared for Emily Gray here because, I mean, she is the women's champion. But I, but I honestly don't know if there's a woman involved in this whole situation. I mean, I, I just don't know what's going to happen here at this point. It's just been an emotional roller coaster between the Apex locker room and these people that have been attacking the champions tonight. We've had two attacks and we've still got two matches involving champions left to go. So, I honestly don't know if we should, I, I honestly don't know if, if we should expect more attacks. I'm a bit, I, hell, I'm, I'm, I'm expecting some fucking Nexus shit to happen. For real. I don't even know if we're going to deal with some Nexus-esque bullshit. I honestly don't know. In my book, at this point, I'm just going to do what I do best, and that is just not speculate, but commentate. Alright? So... We'll try not to speculate, but we will do our commentary. Our commentary. Our commentary. So, without further ado, Emily Gray, Akari Valkyrie, non title, non clash in match. And there it is, ladies and gentlemen, these two women. Looking to give it their all here. In this matchup. These two women have had a bit of rivalry for some time now. And Bray taking it to Valkyrie now. Uh oh. What's gonna happen here? Bray actually taking it to Valkyrie and what a alley oop by Bray. Go for the cover. One time at one. And now Bray. Oh, wait. Oh. Trying to buy Valkyrie. Oh, and down goes Bray. Oh, wait a minute. What the? Oh, wait a minute. You've got to be kidding me. Who the? Again? For the umpteenth time, somebody attacks 
but this time it wasn't for the champion. It was against Valkyrie for some reason. What the hell is going on here? This is just getting absolutely batshit crazy here. Good lord. Making his way to the ring from Tokyo, Japan, weighing in at 217 pounds, the dragon, Tammy Reyes. Ah, uh, Tamura. I am, I'm actually looking forward to this match with Tamura taking on Lance Romance because these two men are very hard hitters. Tamura, though, has some strength in him. Some ungodly, some very godlike strength in him. That has let him pick up men that you would not expect him to pick up just based on his size. But tonight, but hell, if Matt Matthews could do it, so could Tamura. And Tamura, for the first time, he is not with the championship. He is not with the championship belt around his waist. But speaking of championships, a little, up, a little thing we want to mention. Earlier this week, I, I probably may have said earlier tonight, earlier, earlier tonight in the show, but I'm going to say earlier this week, Lee, or, uh, Lee Anderson has announced that Riley Wolf would be suspended, would be unsuspended, and um, would be stripped of the world title due to being suspended when he won it. And so now the match is being decided in a round robin tournament. And now as far as I know, the champions, or, uh, the general managers, I should say, are looking to see who is deserving of the seven spots for both uh, Warzone and Ground Zero. The seven men who, in their opinion, best represent their pro their, their brand. And this is going to be a good one here. Lance Romance taking on Tamura. This is going to be a classic with or without the Robin the round Robin stage being, being used up for the match. We don't know. As a, we don't know who's going to be involved and we don't know how they're going to be decided. But honestly, if you ask me, these two men do deserve a shot at the world title in any way, shape, or form. Tamura especially, because I mean he has shown while he was while he was can't talk right now while he was in a kind of champion, he put up a damn good amount of fight to his opponents, regardless of who they were and regardless if he won or lost. And let me just say, he has seldom lost in his matches. Aside from his match with Carter. And what will go down, in my opinion, is probably a match of the of the short season for WWE 2K19 when it comes to Apex Wrestling. I honestly believe that will be match of the match of the mini season here in Apex Wrestling. And tonight might be no exception with Lance Romance. Taking it on with that man right there, Tamura, the former Intercontinental Champion, taking on a man who has been in the ring with some of the best the community has to offer. And win or lose, he has managed to tell the tale of how many good matches he has had in his career. And what a way to get his career even further than by beating the man who some may deem unbeatable. It's not, unless you were Kurt Carter, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I'll move on with that. But aside from Kurt Carter, I honestly believe Lance Romance might give Tamura a fight that not even TK Rec could give him. Because TK Rec, every time Tamura and TK step in this ring, they have, it's ended, it has always ended with Tamura being victorious in their match. But right now, 
Romance has just taken it to Tamora. Oh, oh man, Tamora with a nice shot right to the top of the head of Lance Romance there. And now Romance going crazy with the Luthi's press. A move that is Busted open many a man if you hit him enough times with the move. Oh, and just taking Tamura down to the arena floor. And we do have, oh, nice kick by Tamura. And speaking of the round robin tournament from earlier, that I was bringing up a little bit earlier, a little bit ago um, uh, during the match, uh, we do have a point system set in place though. Uh, the point system are as follows. If you lose your match, you of course get no points. Not a damn point will be added to your record. However, if you and your opponent are tied, you will get one point each. But, if, of course, there is a winning man in the matchup, and the winner will get two points. And the two men from each show to get the most points, the top two men from each show to get the most points. As far as I know, that's how a round robin tournament works. But the top two men from each brand will go on to compete in the semifinals. And the winners of that, of, those, of the semifinals, are the one that they saw for the world title. And the winner will be the world champion as, as expected. And Tamura going for the cover. Are you kidding me? A knee right on the top of the head. And that was enough to take out Lance Romance? Are you kidding me? Wow. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, man. That's romance. He is mad, dude. I'm a bit late on that reaction time, and I apologize for it. I, hold on, I need to see a replay of that. Well, somebody give me a replay of that. Hold up a second here. Oh man, that romance is pissed. The fact that he lost to Tamura that quickly has pissed him off. Wow. Making his way to the ring, standing seven feet tall, weighing in at 400. Oh, wait a minute. What the? Tough man. Who the? Wait a minute. Who the hell is this? Oh, oh my God. He's attacking TK Rack. What the hell is going on here? Wait a minute. I just been told somebody's. Hijacked the microphone. I don't know who the hell it is, but what the hell is going on here? I told you, Mr. Anderson, that there would be repercussions for what you did to me. Now I am here to unveil what you have seen all night. The faction that I've been biding my time with for the last three months, Blackwire Origins. And this, my friends, is a man that you might seem familiar with. This is the Grimlock DHJ, someone that has been looked over for way too long. And it is time for him to get the spotlight once again. I might need not be Apex World Champion, but you are looking at the next Apex World Champion. Ooh. I don't know what's 
gonna happen here? Riley Wolf announcing this new group. What the hell? So all now we've had these men attacking people, all the champions, and Akari Valkyrie for no reason. They seem to have a reason now. What the hell is gonna happen? Oh man, we're gonna have to find out next week. But until next time, ladies and gentlemen, this is Forrest Walpole, commentator for Apex Wrestling, signing off.